and say you're going to struggle the rest of your life with something. Everybody in here has got something you're going to struggle with the rest of your life. Now, Lord, don't let me lose this train of thought you're giving me right here. Thank you. You see, man gets so desperate and so frazzled by the fact that we struggle with temptation and sin, we will start doing crazy things to try to kill it. Now, here I go. The older I get, the more I realize I grew up in legalism. We thought that because we were Pentecostal and people spoke in tongues and all that, that we were free. No, we weren't. Listen to me. We had, this is a denomination, we had a declaration of faith. Fourteen points. We believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible, in one God eternally existing in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. You know, on and on and on. But that wasn't enough. Because it seemed like people weren't living right. So they concocted a document, another document called the teachings of the church. Well, I thought the declaration of faith was fine. But you see, when men try to control people and make sure they don't sin, they have to create rules. So then here come the teachings. And then they get longer and longer and longer. Don't do this, don't do that. The first part of the document was called the doctrinal teachings. But we just had doctrinal teachings. Then the last part, which got longer and longer and longer, was called practical teachings, in which we were told about practical, everyday things that you could not do. And many of you know how it was. No jewelry. No makeup. Uh... Could not cut your hair. I told that story last Sunday about my mother. And we figured that if we made the rules stringent enough, our kids wouldn't suffer with temptation and we wouldn't do lustful worldly things. So, uh, as a child, instead of going to a clean swimming pool to swim, I and other boys had to go down to a cotton-mouth-infested, (laughs) moccasin-infested creek and swim in long blue jeans and a shirt because we were holy. (laughs) Then we had youth camps. Now, y'all are laughing, but you don't know how this has ruined us. We lost a whole generation. We've got preachers' kids who won't serve the Lord because of that foolishness today. We did it. Lost a whole generation. They're gone. They went to churches where the love and grace of God was preached. They went to churches where they weren't always scared to death. And I would have gone too had my parents not held a tight rein on me. So we had youth camps. Now boys and girls come together at youth camp. Nespa. But because boys are vile and lustful. (laughs) And just can't wait to get their hands on it. And always peeping. The girls swam in the morning at the swimming pool at the youth camp, but that wasn't good enough. We had to put up black polyethylene, eight feet high, all the way around in July, <laughs> with no breeze coming in and the sun bearing down and killing everybody. <laughs> so a boy wouldn't <laughs> peep.
And now that generation's gone, and you'll never get them back. We were miserable. We were confused. But we were holy. Because we had documents that say this is how you live if you belong to us. And so in the attempt to curb natural appetites and stop sin, we do crazy things. Now, there are some people not here this morning that were here last Sunday because they'd quit the church. Because I said... Smoking a cigarette will not constitute backsliding in your life. I guess we'll lose some more this week. <laughs> what constitutes backsliding is when you turn away from Jesus and you start trusting in anything except His mercy. And I went on and on and on. Remember how I went on and on and on last night? People got madder and madder and madder. And I don't care. Because in our minds, we think if we, if we stop doing some things, we can get closer to God or get saved. Or if we start doing some things, and all of that is religious and deceitful. Because the only way to get close to God, the only way to be saved, the only way to be kept is to trust daily in what He did for you, not what you're doing for Him. I don't believe I hear anybody. Because we are going to struggle with something every day. I sat, I'm not, I'm just telling you, I sat in my office yesterday and cried because over the last couple of weeks, I've had numbers of you come up and say, that happened to me. It ruined my life. To this day, I'm wrestling with conviction and condemnation that shouldn't be there. Jesus didn't do that. Man-made religion does that. And there is nothing in the world that's going to keep you from being tempted every day. Every, I repeat this, everybody in here has got a something. A sin that so easily besets you. I got one, two, three. I got it. Because here's the deal. If you can't believe this, you will never know the sweetness of Jesus. When you confess Him as Lord and Savior and repent of your sins, you are at that moment eternally free from the penalty of sin. Yeah. Penalty. But for the rest of your life, you're going to wrestle with the power of sin. It's just enough to keep you weary, beat down, confused, scared, angry, so many times. It's there. Besetting sins. Harassing sins. That's what that means, literally. Constantly harassing sins. Not that you're going to hell, but that it just makes you feel miserable and weary. A lion can kill any animal in Africa. But he cannot stop the flies from making him miserable. It is so pitiful. I watch the Animal Planet and Nat Geo and all that stuff. And those regal, vicious, strong, unflinching lions will tackle even, even a, an elephant at times if they get hungry enough. And while they're trying to catch their breath over the carcass, you see their ears <laughs> flicking 
and their tails wagging and they're blowing gnats out of their nose and the poor zebras, they're just banging themselves with their tail. And that's what a besetting sin is. It's a confounded fly, a gnat, an aggravating little pest, a mental pest, an emotional pest, a memory pest. And you can shake it off in a good old service and say, Whoa, I'm free. Hallelujah. You know, you've done it. I've done it. Whoa, I feel something. This is good. I feel like I've been washed. I mean, honey, up to my elbows. And then you walk to the car. You go, Stop. Stop. Ah, oh. Right? Go ahead and praise God. There's no liniment, there's no oil, there's no nothing that can get rid of it. Because we who are saved from the penalty of sin are still wrestling with the power and the persuasion of sin. And as we grow in grace and keep praying and trusting God, we are learning that these things have no power over us. They cannot steal what God has given us. They just sent to make us miserable. But here's what I'm about to get happy concerning. I've been free from the penalty of sin through the cross. I am being freed from the power of sin through the Word. And one of these days, I'm going to be free from the presence of sin because I'll be like Him. I'll see Him as He is. Now you ought to stand up and praise God for the hope we have. Praise God. I want to invite you, somebody, to join me in the altar. If there is a hunger in you to hunger for God more. If you'd like to cry out, Lord, I want to love you more. If, if there is any degree of drawing inside of you that says, I want Jesus. Fully, completely, all I can get. I want Jesus. I'm going to ask you to come down here and join me because that's my prayer. I want to love him more than I love him now. Don't you? I want to serve him better than I've ever served him before. I want to ask him to help me hate sin. And love righteousness. Do you hear that? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if you could develop a hatred for sin and a love for righteousness? Well, listen to me. Only God can give you that. You can't climb a mountain, you can't run a race, you can't do without food, you can't do anything. Only God can give you these things. Everything you ever get from God is a gift. gift. Praise the Lord. The The gift of eternal life. But here's what I keep doing. I keep presenting myself. Here I am. I want to love you more. I want to hate sin. I want to love righteousness. I want to please you. Here I am again. I fell down last week. I made a mess of some things last week, but here I am again. Mm. I tripped all over myself. I probably embarrassed heaven, but here I am again.